My name is Kate Beck. I'm the city project manager. We have our consultant team here as well to talk about uh, the update of the master thoroughfare plan. And I wanted to start by talking a little bit about what that document is. Um, it's the city's long range transportation planning document. And the purpose of it is to set the alignments of the major roadways in our arterial network, and then to also define how wide they're gonna be and what elements need to be included. So it helps us in the future for the next generation, the next couple of generations of development to preserve the right of way that we need um, for a logical transportation system and to give guidance about how those roads need to function to support the surrounding development. Unfortunately, this plan does not come with a funding package. And so when we talk about these improvements that we're recommending, one of the outputs of the project is we hope to use the data from the project to help prioritize uh, these projects and these facilities as funding becomes available. But an output of this project is not going to be a, a capital improvement plan, for example, with a list of funding. It also doesn't talk about operational considerations. And so we don't, we don't talk specifically about intersection operations or intersections in general or street lights or the, or the sorts of things that um, are the detailed subject of street design. This is a more global plan than that. So in terms of the agenda for today's presentation, uh, I wanna talk just a little bit about what we heard in our first round of public meetings. This is the last um, of four meetings for the second round, and so I wanna tell you what we heard in the first round and what we've done with it. Uh, and then introduce some draft goals and objectives for this update that we've crafted based on the feedback that we got from the first round. I wanna um, talk through real quickly the overall framework of the project. And then Christopher Kinzel with HDR, who's our uh, primary consultant, is gonna stand up and talk about some of the technical progress that we've made since kicking the project off in terms of the information that you see up on the boards, the cross sections that we're talking about, the street types that we're, we're proposing, um, the lanes map that's come out of some of our modeling work. And so he'll go through that in a lot of detail. I'll come back up to talk about some research we've done into peer cities and what they're doing in terms of transportation planning. And then um, just briefly tell you what's gonna be next in the project and then what else we can do um, this evening. So just briefly, in terms of uh, the first round of public meetings, we had four meetings also dispersed geographically um, in the spring, in April. The agenda at those meetings was to introduce the project overall, uh, to get feedback on sort of the concepts with this update. I should have mentioned this a minute ago. We update the MTP periodically every five or six years. The last one was in 2009. But this update is um, quite a bit more substantial than what we've done in the past. We're trying to rethink the fundamentals of the plan. And so with the first round of public meetings, we wanted to hear sort of feedback about those concepts and the ideas that we had for how to reinvent the plan. And so we've categorized what we heard and we've mapped the comments that we got um, geographically. The bulk of the feedback and what we really wanted there, in addition to introducing the project and the concepts, was to understand what issues um, existed in the transportation plan as it's built today and as it was planned according to the last update. What alignments didn't work, um, where congestion existed, what connections needed to be made. We heard a lot of comments about um, operational concerns, signal timing, potholes, that sort of thing. We welcome those. This plan isn't gonna address those specifically, but we're happy to hear them because we can pass them on to the correct department in, um, in the city or onto the correct agency. And so we've categorized here um, the types of comments that we heard. Uh, a lot about operations and maintenance, a lot about mobility, how difficult it is to get from here to there or what a more efficient route would be. A lot of support for um, transportation choice to, to be able to take transit or um, to, to walk or to bike to your destination instead of always needing to use your vehicle. And then again, some, a, a lot of individual comments about um, sort of areas of safety concern and that sort of thing. So this slide is not meant to be read from where you're sitting. <laughs> uh, but what it is meant to show is that all of the comments that we've received, we've captured and we've categorized and we've identified who the responsible party is and what the action is that needs to be taken and what the status is. And so if it's a, if it's a comment about an alignment, then it's ours to handle as part of this update. If it's a comment about a pothole, then it goes on to operations. And so we're keeping track of all of those and the spreadsheet is, become enormous, but in any case, th this is the way we're tracking the feedback that we get. 
So we want to put together some draft or uh, some goals and objectives for the plan, and we want to tie outcome-based performance measures to those goals and objectives, and we want to use those to prioritize these improvements when funding becomes available. And so based on the feedback that we got from the first round, and from staff and from other partners, school districts and, and, and counties and other cities, uh, here's what we've come up with, and this is something that we'd like your feedback on tonight. I'm, I'm gonna read it to you for those, um, those of you who can't see it in the back, and then I'll um, unpack it a little bit. So the draft vision statement is provide a complete and connected context-sensitive transportation system for all users that supports mobility, healthy living, and economic development. And so when we talk about a complete transportation system, we mean a system that accommodates all users, that's safe and comfortable and effective for everyone that's using the streets. Um, and when we talk about a context-sensitive transportation system, we're suggesting that the roadways should reflect and support the land use that they're adjacent to. So an arterial roadway that's running adjacent to a residential development should feel different and should be designed differently than a roadway that's running through a commercial area. Um, so for all users, again, that, that suggests a complete system that gives um, choice about how you get around. So if you're a cyclist or if you're a pedestrian, the streets should serve you as well as automobiles. And ultimately, we want to make sure that we're supporting mobility, healthy living, and of course, economic ben benefits. Streets play an important role in that as well. And so we've put together this graphic that, that sort of talks about how mobility is, is a very important goal that needs to be balanced against opportunity to have streets that are active and lively and comfortable and safe. Uh, we want to sustain what we have um, in terms of the capital investment that the city's already made and to maintain our roadways and to make sure that we're coordinating with, um, with our regional partners. So this is where we are um, today in terms of this. What we would like to do again is to come up with some measurable um, uh, outcome-based performance measures associated with each of these goal areas that we could use to prioritize projects. Real briefly, I'll talk about the project framework. We have two advisory committees. The first is a task force, which is a nine-member panel that's appointed by council. There's a representative for each council district. and. Their, their task is to give feedback to the project team about alignment recommendations, about the street types and the cross-section elements that we're developing, um, to weigh in as the project develops at key milestones, um, to hear from the resource panel, which I'll talk about in just a minute, to hear from the public and, um, and make sure that, that that input is being incorporated. And then finally, to offer recommendations about the draft plan to the City Plan Commission and to the City Council in advance of, of adoption. We also have a resource panel, which is made up of a broader stakeholder group. And so it's um, organizations across the city that have perspectives on the, on the transportation network from uh, community groups, neighborhood groups, the school districts, the chambers of commerce, um, the counties, uh, you, you can see here are some, some folks that are represented. So that's about 50 members strong. We meet with both of these group, groups periodically. We've been meeting with them about every six weeks up until now. And so I'll flip backwards. The resource panel um, has a little bit of a different charge than the task force and maybe more of a technical basis. And so we're kind of vetting ideas and concepts and recommendations to make sure that they make sense from their perspective, that there's not some innovation that we haven't thought of that we might want to incorporate. And so they've been very helpful to us. And then with that, I'm going to hand it over to Christopher Kinzel for a few minutes. He'll talk about the progress of the project, and I'll be back in just a minute. Thank you. I'm Christopher Kinzel from HDR. Um, and yeah, I'm going to walk you through sort of an overview of what's on these boards, because they're, they're pretty dense, pretty intense. So uh, I'll do that. This reminds me of church, because uh, no one wants to sit in the front row. So last night, it was like church, too, because I put someone to sleep during my talk. So uh, we'll see if I can keep you awake. But so. The MTP has been around for a long time, and uh, for a long time it's classified roads in a fairly limited way, I guess. Um, and uh, the, the current MTP has three different types of roads in it. Principal arterials, which are basically always six lanes with a median. Major arterials, which are four lanes with a median. And minor arterials, which are four lanes with a double yellow line down them, so what we call an undivided road. And, and really when you open the plan, that's, that's pretty much what you get. Uh, and, and that's, uh, as, as Kate says, that's not 
That's not being sensitive to where you are in the city or what other users might need to use the road. Um, and so we're really trying to expand that as we move forward with this update. As I think Kate mentioned, it's sort of a reimagining of, of how, how the system would work. And so w the, Kate mentioned the idea of complete streets. That's, a, that's something that's coming from the mayor on down. The city is committed to, um, to developing street types that are uh, more embracing of all different kinds of transportation, have a little more uh, flexibility in them into, into what can be provided. So things like bike lanes and, and bike accommodations, and not just bike lanes, but the different kinds that are, com that are becoming prevalent today, like a buffered bike lane next to parking so that uh, people don't open their doors into the bike lane, or an off-street um, separated bike, bike facility. Uh, which, which can be applicable in places with heavy traffic and, and, um, or higher speeds. Um, you know, there's, there's arterials in town. Obviously, this doesn't make sense all over town, but that have parking on them. And, and the MTP is kind of silent on that right now. And we'd like to set some guidelines for when that makes sense and what, what the design criteria are or the general principles. Shared use paths are uh, sort of a, a wider version of a sidewalk that allow for pedestrians and bicyclists. Um, the T is working on its plan right now for, uh, for transit, updating its plan for transit uh, across the city. And, and they're looking at uh, special, and, and some of the, there's some of these already in the city, special transit lanes um, that are dedicated for buses. Uh, also, we're, we're talking about the potential, or we want to allow for the potential of maybe median transit, whether that's a, a, a rapid bus transit in, in a median or even someday light rail. And we just want to, there's, those plans aren't firm or baked, but we just want to uh, sort of allow for the possibility that those occur and start, start thinking about that. And then down to simple things like what the medians look like. So the current plan doesn't say anything about these two-way left turn lanes or different median types that might make sense in different environments. And so all these elements are, are things we're trying to incorporate into the updated plan. So how do we do that? Um, so this is where I kind of start walking through the boards a little bit. On this first board, defining street types, we, we've thrown out the old classification, those principal arterials, major arterials, minor arterials. And, um, and this is something we've worked together with. Uh, we, even, we even talked a little bit about this at the first public meeting. And then we uh, have worked with our resource panel and task force uh, back and forth to, to kind of hone these and, and come up with uh, these five street types you see here, and they're explained in more detail on this number one board over here, but they, they are more based around, uh, and I'll show you this in more detail in a second, but, but where th their surrounding context as opposed to just how much traffic they need to carry. And so things like uh, activity streets, which are very, very pedestrian oriented um, and uh, slower speeds, Commerce mixed use streets are more the business type streets, but also still very pedestrian oriented. Um, you know, so, some streets you see like this aren't always arterials, and so they don't belong on this plan. But there are many, many in the city that that do that do carry. They're important for traffic carrying purposes, but they run through these areas or will in the future of where the context is like this. And then moving on up to. Um, Neighborhood connector, which as Kate was talking about, is a road that that you know may run sort of around the edge of an, a residential area, carrying uh, connecting um, connect, connecting neighborhoods to services and those kinds of things. Uh, a commercial connector, which is you know usually set in retail areas, there'll be more driveways and different characteristics on those streets. And then system link, which is. Um, uh, of all these, the most about moving automobile traffic, although all of these uh, we're working, and you'll see this in a second, we're working to incorporate uh, all the different tra transportation modes. But you would see these in areas where you're getting near a freeway and, and, and you're starting to carry a lot of traffic bound for that, or, or if it's a major regional system kind of road. Um, but all these uh, are, are arterials. They're all major streets. and so. It's not like this is the only kind that carries a lot of traffic, but they have that sort of more specific function. So the next board is after you've after you've defined uh, what these what these sort of look like, then the next question is where do they go? So the first thing we did is we took the old uh, the current MTP 
and, and sort of reimagined, all right, if we used all those different colors that are, you know, the blue is activity and orange is neighborhood uh, and, and so on, um, how would that, what, what makes sense based on the, uh, the, the land use in the city and the future plans? So on this board over here, we actually have a map of the city's future land use plan. And we've really you had that as a guide as we've been working through what makes sense uh, for these different streets and how they support that land use. Um, and that, th these things get out of date. I mean, th this, is a, this is fairly current, but even we, we've been talking also with stakeholders about, uh, and, and city staff who know about future development plans that are gonna change that map a little. And so some of these reflect things that aren't even on this map yet, but are, but are known to be future projects. So it's really tied to the area, what the land use is gonna look like, whether that's residential, commercial, um, industrial, all those kinds of things, it's, it's tied to that. Uh, and so, so this map is definitely something we want you to look at tonight. We've got a, a single version of it here, and I think most of you in the back have already seen that we have blow-ups of the city in quadrants, and so you can look at that. We've been through this in detail with our, our task force and our resource panel, and so this has already been through some, anal and city staff and other folks have, have all kind of weighed in on this, and we're, we're certainly interested in, in what you have to say about it. So, um, I say this because this one's fairly baked. I'm going to show you a map in a little while that's, that we're, we're in the middle of developing and, and uh, we're showing it to you it's sort of as we're developing it. So uh, that's step two. So here's where it gets a little crazy. Step three is, is this complicated board over here. And um, once you know where the roads are going to go, the question is how wide should they be? Well, how wide should they be depends on what elements you, you have on them. So if you can imagine, each of these blocks is, uh, I, I use the old traffic engineer way of, uh, if you're trying to look at how a road lays out and whether striping lines up, you kind of get down on your, you get down and you look at the street kind of this way. That's kind of what, what these are. They're like looking at the street and, and each of these is a different uh, street section. So, so this one is 130 feet wide and it's got a, a 34 foot median in it and it's got, uh, um, for transit and it's got uh, two 12-foot lanes and um, and all these different elements have the different colors that are described on this board so the orange is bike related so these are bike lanes and the and purple is transit and so uh, you can see the different elements over there and uh, this is a two-way left turn lane and this is a median so this is just a really compact way to kind of represent we're, we're trying to allow a lot of flexibility and so it makes, this a, it makes the plan a little more complicated, but this is a way to kind of show those and to show you how this, this kind of works out. So again, it's, it's sort of like you're looking at the, at the road here and you can see on this side, there's, there's sort of a pedestrian zone, this six foot sidewalk, uh, a buffer, uh, is this buffer area, uh, the bike lane, the six foot, all these numbers are widths. And, um, and then uh, the, the auto lane and then the median. And, and so you can kind of get a, a sense of how that is. And, and this is really important to the plan. The whole plan pivots on this because uh, we're, as, as Kate mentioned, we're trying to set the rights away for the future. We don't want to make the roads too wide um, because uh, you, the city doesn't want to waste a lot of money building roads that, that you don't need and you don't want to reserve a lot of, uh, waste a lot of land reserving right away for that. We also don't want to make them too small because, and so roadway capacity is a really important piece. And so, so having this suite of options allows us to do what we call right sizing and uh, make the roads uh, the size they're, they're gonna be, which really means we need to do some good forecasting and I'll talk about that in a second. As I mentioned, this is kind of crazy. We have 60, 80 different roadway sections here where today we have three, right? And so a developer comes into the city and says, well, oh, I want this really narrow one. This is great, you know? And, and uh, so people have that question, well, how, how, how can you ensure that the right one gets built in the right place? It's not, uh, Kate likes to say, it's not a cafeteria plan. You don't walk in and just pick the one you like. Um, we have a process that actually gets you down to one, to one section, and that's, that's what board four is talking about. Um, so what we've set up, and we're, we're, still, uh, we're still getting this nailed down and refined, but we've run it through our committees and they, they kind of like it, and, and we're making little tweaks here and there. But it's a process where you look through a bunch of different lenses at the, at the elements that you want in the street, and by the time you're done, you've, you've ended at one section. So I'll show you the elements and then, or how this process works, and then a quick example of it. So 
you start off with the street type. So we have these 80 different cross sections over here. Immediately by picking a street type, you've narrowed it down to one of these little groups. So in this, well, I'll show you an example later where we, you look at the map and say, oh, this section of Heritage Trace is a neighborhood connector. So this, this is all that's open to me, is, is this possibility, th those sections. And then, then we have developed what we call a lanes map. And that's the other map that we have tonight. We, we talk about it on that fifth board and we have quadrant versions of it back there. But this is, this is the piece that's different, the, the, that's really different from the old plan. The old plan said a principal arterial is always six lanes and a major arterial is always four lanes. And um, th this plan actually looks at, well, uh, let, let's think about the fact that, you know, there, there might be a, um, something that, that is a, needs to not carry as much traffic, but it, it moves through a business area. So maybe, it, you know, it only needs uh, one lane in each direction. Or um, you know the, you may need uh, you might need a six-lane road in a commercial area, but you might need a four-lane road might work just as well. And so we want to we're, we're setting the context of these roads and saying this is a commercial connector, but it can vary in, in width from a one lane in each direction to four lanes to or two or three lanes in each direction. And so what we're doing is we're we've developed a travel forecasting map. And this is a really our travel forecasting model. This is a really common. Um, thing that's done in cities all across the country and it takes that same land use that I was talking about over here the, the future forecasted land use in the city and looks at well what does that mean from a traffic perspective how many how many cars does a residential subdivision develop generate every day and how does that uh, how does that play out on the roadway system and so we're using that model which we we started out with the the uh, one that the that's a regional model that's built by the Council of Governments and We've kind of um, worked on it for Fort Worth's uh, specific demographics and working out some of the kinks of it um, and, and looking even longer term than some of the traditional models look so that we really make sure we're not uh, ignoring or neglecting some growth that we're expecting out in the future. And that sets this, this number of lanes map. The thing is, as I, as I said earlier, we're in the middle of making this map. So we're showing it to you when we're in the middle of it. But that's just where we are in the process, and we wanted to show you where we are in the process. And so we're certainly interested in your comments. Just be aware that um, we are uh, we are still fiddling with the model and getting things just right. Uh, and at the end, I, I, I said this last night. It's not just push a button and the computer tells you how many lanes. It's you, you've got to do that, but then you got to think. You got to use your brains as well. And so we, we're using our judgment. We're running it by different folks who know the city, know, know the growth, know how things will work. Um, so that's what the lanes map is for. So that's step two. This step three is a little less complicated. The, the T is developing their plan that I mentioned earlier, and they're actually going to be developing a map. They're in the middle of doing that right now as we're doing our plan. They're developing their plan. A map that shows where they think the high capacity bus corridors might need to be and where, bus, where exclusive bus lanes might need to go. And so our plan will essentially point to their plan and say, um, you know, in this selection process, we're going to look at what, what they're saying, uh, what the transit needs are in the future, and uh, have these. And, and, and so it's, again, just looking at, someone, looking at one more map to determine, uh, to help narrow this down. Medians, uh, so I mentioned there's a wide variety of medians that can be on a road from a two-way left turn lane. And so that we actually ask a series of questions we and it's based on data that the city has it's pretty well available how, how much traffic is on the road how fast it's going number of lanes some other things like that and that dictates uh, that dictates what kind of median makes the most sense if there's a lot of turning movements you and it's in a business area you may need a uh, two-way left turn lane those kinds of things uh, if it's on a corridor that's really busy you might need a median that's wide enough for double left turns at some intersections those kinds of things uh, parking, a couple of our sections include parking, the activity and the, um, and the commerce mixed use that we talked about. You know, those are more the sort of have a downtown flavor. They don't just belong downtown, but, but that's kind of the flavor they have. And so they have on-street parking and there's some choices there about whether it's angle or parallel. And again, that's based on looking at traffic volumes. If there's, if there's too much traffic, maybe you don't want to do angle parking because that causes a lot more conflicts. Uh, and those kinds of things. And so we look at the number of lanes and the traffic volumes. And then last is, but not least, is uh, 
bike facilities. You have to know the answer to a couple of other questions here before you decide on your bike facility. That's also based on tra traffic volumes. It's based on the Bike Fort Worth plan that's been developed, and, but also it looks at things like parking type, because I mentioned earlier, um, you know, if, just if, you, if you determine you want a bike lane on the street, but there's parking there, then you, wa you want to make it a little wider, so there's that buffer for the, the door buffer, door zone, as we call it. So it's, this is the general process, and here's kind of how it works. So uh, I mentioned earlier, so starting again from the beginning, so let's say you, you, um, we're, we're, using, we're gonna be applying this process as we develop the plan, and then ultimately as a process that can be uh, used down the road when people are uh, updating the plan or amending a plan for a specific development, that kind of thing. Um, there's various things that can cause a change in the plan, but so, so you look at the, you look at your, you're talking about your segment of road, okay, my map says it's gonna be a neighborhood connector, so here's my, already narrowed down my choices here. Uh, the number of lanes, you look at the lanes map and, and you say, okay, one lane in each direction. So that narrows down, that takes a whole bunch of sections out, basically. Um, transit, okay, well, it, I look at the transit plan, it says there's, n there's, no, there's no purple line on the map, ba basically. So that takes a few more of these facilities out. I'm down to four potential ones. Um, a median, so I do my calculations and it says two-way left turn lane makes sense here. So we're down to just two sections left. And then parking, this kind of street has no parking on it, so it, it doesn't really affect our decision. And then uh, I, I do a couple calculations, look at the bike plan, and it says conventional bike lane, which is a six foot wide bike lane, and boom, we're down to one section. So that's how you can get from this massive amount of, uh, of sections down to a single one. So it'll, we've allowed a lot of flexibility through this plan, but also we say flexibility, but predictability, so that people know uh, it's not just this random, uh, random s set of streets that's going to be out there. They all fit their context and their use. So all of the, the, the major street plan is basically two pieces. As Kate described earlier, it's kind of the uh, what should the streets look like, um, and then it's sort of what, uh, what kind of right-of-way should we preserve, and what should the, uh, where should the roads go, essentially. And so I've talked all about my the first part of what I've said is about these first five boards, and that's the what should the roads look like and how wide should they be. Um, quickly, we're also looking at alignments. So we, um, we, we have technology that really wasn't available in previous iterations of the plan now, a mapping, computerized mapping technology, where we can actually look at, well, there's just a line on the map here, but does it make sense? Does it, does it cross a large amount of floodplain? Are there environmental hazards in the way? Does it hit a gas well, is, the topo is there a hill in the middle, you know, and some things that sometimes in the past when you drew these lines on a map you really couldn't look at in that much detail. Um, I'll show you a little bit more about that. Uh, this is talking sort of about this last board, but one, what we did is, uh, Kate showed the, that map of all the comments we got from you at the last round of public meetings. We've pulled those together, we worked, we had some in-depth meetings with city staff who also you know, know what their constituents are, are asking about in the future, and, and, some, and some other folks, our, our, our resource panel and task force have weighed in. And so this is what I call a blob map. It's, it's got these red blobs all over it, and these are all issue areas where, that have been identified. It's, it's different than the map of everything you, you told us at the last meeting. As Kate said, there were things about traffic signals and potholes and that kind of thing, and we're, those are being routed to the correct place. But this is our map to evaluate where these roads should go? Should there be a bend here because of this hill or, you know, those kinds of things? Or is there a connection missing? Or is, uh, you know, is there a city nearby that's updated their plan so we need to connect with their plan? And so these are all, we're going through these systematically uh, one by one and we're, and so we're interested in you kind of taking a look at those as well and just, um, but, but tonight we don't have all the details of that as well. We're, we're sort of telling you where we're going. And, and this is what we're doing is we're, we're looking at the roads and if they're, if they're, there's a lot of roads in town that are already built. And so uh, this plan affects the most roads that haven't been built or roads that are you know, two lane dirt roads or, or rural roads today, but we know in the future they're gonna be serving a lot of growth. Um, but we are also looking at roads that have been built and, and you'll see that we have colored, you know, we've assigned road types and, or street types to those roads. What, that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, as soon as the plan is done, we're gonna go out and start rebuilding all the existing roads in town. Um, 
that's definitely not the case. We're kind of developing a process for, uh, you know, what do you do about a built road? Uh, and, and it'll be, you know, the, the plan would guide you in a, in a case where um, a road, you know, there's a, a project being done on a road and either there's a redevelopment project or something like that. And so the, this, this plan would tell you the general principles for that. But most of the things we're doing is looking at these future roads and there's a lot of them on the map. Um, and we're using this, what's called GIS, our, our computerized mapping, to look, at, to look at that and look at issues that people raised on that blob map, uh, and then we, we evaluate them. And so if, uh, the, you know, we, we look and see, is this a major issue? Is it something we need to worry about? Some of them, and many of them, are no. I mean, some of the issues you see on this board are, are you know, things like, can you check whether this makes sense to realign or or just clean up the map a little bit, there's just a mistake on the map, or things like that. So a lot of the issues are just pretty simple. But some of them are more major, and, and we're, we're doing some, we're looking at, well, should a road be taken off the plan, or should a road be realigned? And um, so for those kinds of issues, that's what this map book, the, the last picture on the last board over there, um, we're developing one of these for, for each of those situations. And so what it is, is we're, this is, uh, Avondale Hazlitt, I think, and, and um, this, is, uh, this is a few different options for where road alignments could go there. And, and we're, then we're running them through our computerized model, looking at things like, well, land values and population, sensitive population groups, the land use. Uh, here's an excerpt from the Hazlitt land use plan. All the things you see on the map, gas wells and um, floodplains, and then we're comparing them, we're, we're, we're letting our, our analysis sort of machine tell us some things, well this one hits more floodplain than that one, and ultimately it's all about cost. This is, we're, we're trying to make cost effective decisions for the city in terms of, of these future roads. And so um, we're, we're, we're showing you one example of sort of what our product is gonna be tonight, and again, it's a very detailed thing. We're rolling up our sleeves with a couple of our committees in a couple weeks to, to go through each of these one by one, and. Uh, it's gonna be painful because this is really detailed. <laughs> but uh, it's an important process because it, it, affects, uh, it affects future development areas and future developable areas. And so we really wanna make sure we get this right so that, the, uh, so that uh, growth occurs and we're sort of following the growth in a sensible manner. So just real briefly, I mentioned that a part of the project is to look to other communities and try to understand what they're doing um, with transportation planning and if they have any good ideas that we would want to capture that might be applicable in Fort Worth. So what we were looking for were concepts, policies, processes, and then also lessons learned. We realized that the implementation of this plan is going to be really critical to its success. And so where other communities have done something similar, we want to see how it went, if there are things that they would have done differently. We were looking for communities that had recently been involved in transportation planning and that had used either innovative or progressive approaches or were using some of the approaches that we're considering, again, to understand if there are some lessons learned in the implementation or in the development of the plan that would be helpful to our project. Um, and then also we were looking for communities that were comparable to Fort Worth, both in, t in terms of um, land area and population. So uh, this is a listing of the cities that we looked into and we started first by doing a literature review where we looked at what their policies and their processes are, um, but then we followed up with in-depth surveys with the staff to really understand, uh, make sure that we fully understood what we were reading and looking at. And what we found were a number of practices that we thought may have application in Fort Worth. Not all of these that would be uh, implemented through this plan, um, but that would, would complement it. So for Example, there were communities that, um, under the area of complete streets, uh, there were communities that rather than using a traditional sort of level of service measure um, for automobile traffic to determine how many lanes they needed, they had developed sort of tailored level of service measures for streets like the activity streets where they would look maybe at the level of service for pedestrians or for other modes or they would recognize that additional congestion in those areas was allowable because you wanted to try to encourage activity on the street. So that was an interesting idea. Um, we, we saw tools that staff would use, um, especially in constrained environments, to try to understand where uh, it's not possible to expand the right-of-way, but you still want to apply some of these comments. They had checklists and guidelines and decision trees to think about how to prioritize um, the components of the street would, that would be incorporated. Um, th there were communities that were doing what we we're trying to do in terms of 
tying the goals and objectives to a prioritization of, um, of the projects for when funding became available. Uh, th there was some information about um, safety considerations for, for some of the treatments that they were using that I think is useful to us. And then finally, there was good information about putting the plan together and keeping it up to date. Because um, the plan that we're creating sort of ties together a lot of transportation plans, the bike plan and the T's transit plan and our uh, walk Fort Worth plan, anytime the, and the land use plan, anytime those are updated, it's going to trigger an update of this rather than just doing one periodically every five or six years. And then briefly, in terms of next steps for the project, uh, our next task force meeting, those are public meetings, is scheduled for October 19th. And the agenda then is going to be a presentation of the draft plan. So we'll have recommendations at that point regarding street type assignment and the lanes map and an outline of the policy document that will accompany it. Um, and then we're, we're anticipating a third round of public meetings, which will be the final round in December, early to mid-December, to talk again about the, um, the, the draft plan before we move into the adoption process, which will start after the beginning of the year. And between now and then, we're going to be working on refining and finalizing the street types, the cross-sections, the alignments. We're also going to begin working on an access management policy that the city doesn't have now, but um, that will contemplate median treatments, uh, driveway spacing, that sort of thing, to, to think about the number of conflict points and the effect on capacity. Um, and then finally, we're going to be developing cross-sections for the lower level streets that are not included uh, on the map, so your neighborhood streets, collector streets, that sort of thing. We want to um, develop cross-sections that are not as detailed, but that incorporate the same complete streets concepts that we're building for the arterial network. And then in terms of the rest of this evening, after the, the close of the presentation, we'd be happy to answer any questions. And the staff and the consultant team will be available, and we can talk about each of the boards and each of these steps in more detail.